What's going on everyone? The holidays are upon us and what better time to rank the top 10 Christmas movies of all time. There are literally thousands of Christmas movies. It goes without saying that normally rankings are relatively subjective, however Christmas movies in particular are especially unique to every person considering how many of them there are and the type of Christmas movies that each person enjoys. If I happen to leave out one of your favorite Christmas movies, leave a comment with which ones you think I should have included. For movies that have multiple adaptations, I will only be including my favorite of those adaptations on the list. It would be the best Christmas present ever if you subscribe to help today's rankings reach the end of the year goal of 500 subscribers. What is the best Christmas movie? Is Die Hard actually a Christmas movie? These questions will be answered and more in this special episode of today's rankings. Let's get into it. Number 10. A Christmas Story. We're kicking these rankings off with an absolute classic with the story of Ralphie Parker and his pursuit of the greatest Christmas gift known to man, the Red Ryder Range 200 shot BB gun. The movie isn't simply about Ralphie's desire for a BB gun, but meant to be a reflection of childhood in general and serve as a wave of nostalgia to the viewer. His goal-obsessed father, underappreciated mother, and silly younger brother emulate the family members of a typical American home. Unlike some of the other films on this list, A Christmas Story doesn't necessarily have an overt take-home message, something that is relatively common amongst Christmas movies. You can make the case that the movie is meant to highlight the growing commercialization of the holiday season, but ultimately it's a story not built on a central theme per se, but more so meant to transport each person back to their childhood. It's focused on family, but even more so the imagination and desire that comes with longing for that one special gift on Christmas morning. One of my favorite things about A Christmas Story is that it doesn't try to over-sentimentalize Christmas. Rather, it simply portrays the highs and lows of being a kid. Every step of the way, Ralphie is constantly told that he shouldn't be asking for a BB gun because he'll shoot his eye out. Not to mention the fact he is bullied, gets in trouble with his parents, and at times learns the disappointments of life. Ultimately though, the film is an undying model of Christmas movies, with comedy for both parents and the kids, touching moments, and even some not so touching but hilariously memorable scenes. Note to self, don't ever lick a light pole in the dead of winter. I triple dog dare you to watch this film and not enjoy the heartwarming story of Ralphie, the warm familiarity of his family, and the enduring story of a child longing for a Christmas gift. Number 9. Die Hard. Yep, yeah, I said it. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I've always gone back and forth on my thoughts regarding the Christmas status of this film. This year, I sought to do more of an in-depth analysis of the movie. Besides the fact that there are dozens of Christmas trees and decorations throughout the film, Christmas carols are sung a dozen different times, the word Christmas is used 13 different times, and the entire movie occurs in the midst of an office Christmas party while John McClane is trying to get home to his daughter to deliver a Christmas present. Okay. In all seriousness, part of the great thing about the Christmas movie genre that also makes it incredibly difficult to decide on 10 favorites is that the Christmas category is so vast. It can include anything from an off-the-wall comedy, to terrifying horror, children's animation, to the all-time black and white classics. And for me personally, Die Hard is deserving of a spot in the top 10. I think it'd be more than fair to call Die Hard the best action Christmas movie of all time, although Batman Returns might have something to say about that. The movie doesn't waste too much time as New York cop John McClane, played by Bruce Willis, travels to California to visit his daughter and his estranged wife, who works as the VP for the large Nakatomi Corporation. Chaos ensues as terrorists arrive at the holiday office party on the 30th floor of the Nakatomi high-rise, and McClane must do what is necessary to save all the office employees, including his wife, who have been taken hostage. I'm a sucker for 80s and 90s action movies, and Die Hard is definitely no exception. In addition to the fistfights and explosions that tend to accompany these sorts of films, there are some memorable acting performances too. Clearly, Willis's McCain is most remembered, but it is the work of the late Alan Rickman in his role of Hans Gruber that shines most, and McClane's radio contact on the ground Al, played by Reginald Vell Johnson, is one of the highlights of the film's cast too. Die Hard is one of my go-tos every Christmas, the blueprint for Christmas action movies, and every time I see it, one that keeps me saying, yippee mother Number 8. Claws. This is probably the biggest surprise on today's rankings. In fact, I surprised myself with how much I enjoyed this movie. Amongst all the movies on this list, Claws is the only one that I watched this year for the very first time. Typically, my preference for Christmas movies is in the live action department. 
However, that's not to say that there isn't the occasional animated film that comes along with enough charm to crack the list. Besides the fact that I love old school Christmas movies, I should also note that I am not the biggest fan of modern Christmas films. Case in point, Claus is the only movie on this list that was made after 2003. Have you ever thought extra highly of a movie because of how unexpected it was that you would enjoy it as much as you did? I refer to this as the interstellar effect, seeing as most people had very little idea what that movie was about and then left the theater having their mind blown. While Claus is clearly not on the cinematic masterpiece level of interstellar, I finished the Netflix movie feeling as though I had been interstellared, if you will. Jesper, the movie's main character, comes from a powerful family and lives a luxurious lifestyle, but all that is jeopardized when he is assigned by his father, the head of the Postal Academy, to be the new postman on the faraway island town of Smirensburg, with the promise that he can return if he accomplishes the task of sending 6,000 letters. The storyline outlook is somewhat predictable before it occurs, but I nonetheless felt hooked, as there are enough slight twists and nuances to the story that give life to the somewhat familiar, spoiled, selfish character learns to be selfless plot. It's effectively a Santa Claus origin story, but uniquely presented through the eyes of Jesper, with a truly enjoyable twist on an age-old heartwarming tale. Perhaps the reason I most enjoyed Claus is that it didn't try to fit a certain mold, but purposely is intended to be outside the box and it succeeds. It even scored a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, the second highest amongst all 10 movies on this list. And most of all, it teaches each of us an important Christmas lesson. A true act of selflessness always sparks another. Number 7. The Santa Claus when I think of Christmas movies that I grew up with, this one has to be right there near the top of the list. The movie centers around Scott Calvin, played by the iconic Tim Allen, as well as his son Charlie. Much to the displeasure of Scott, his ex-wife's new husband, who is otherwise a nice guy, has been telling Charlie that Santa isn't real. Scott attempts to persuade his son otherwise, and in the process winds up accidentally startling the real Santa Claus causing him to lose his balance and fall from the roof. One of the oversights of this film when you're watching it as a kid is that the whole film is predicated upon the fact that Scott accidentally kills Santa Claus. But if you can get past that initial hurdle, the film is one of the most humorous and heartwarming classics. Scott inadvertently then becomes Santa after reciting The Santa Claus, and along with the help of the head elf Bernard, some clever reindeer, and his son Charlie, Scott must take over the mantle of Santa and continue to deliver Christmas to the children of the world. It's tough to beat the comic presence of Tim Allen, who turns in one of his best performances of all time. Sure, the special effects haven't aged great, but the peculiar look of the mid-1990s effects seemingly do more to add to the humor of it all, rather than leave you asking why it looks so odd. The Santa Claus is truly a magical film that will continue to enchant children and adults for years and generations to come. The movie shows that sometimes we may think seeing is believing, but oftentimes it is the other way around. Number 6. A Charlie Brown Christmas A Charlie Brown Christmas was the first Peanuts special ever produced following the incredible popularity of the beloved comic strip. On paper, everything about A Charlie Brown Christmas spelled disaster at the time of release. The 25-minute animated children's short film premiered during primetime television. It used the voices of real children rather than actors. It incorporated jazz music, a lengthy Bible passage, and the common laugh track of the day is noticeably absent from the film. So why then does this movie remain arguably the most well-known animated Christmas classic of all time nearly six decades later? To some, that still remains a bit of a mystery, but I think it can be best explained that there is lots of beauty in the simple things. The short film opens with a depressed Charlie Brown, even though it's Christmas time, a notion that many can relate to in some way or another. Lucy, after charging Charlie Brown a nickel for psychiatric advice, insists he needs an activity and asks him to direct the Christmas play. Charlie Brown struggles to garner the attention as well as the support of the children, and after several attempts to direct the play, sets out to find the best Christmas tree. He ends up selecting one of the smallest and skimpiest looking trees, for which he is poked fun at by some of the other kids. After Charlie Brown fails in an attempt to decorate the tree with a single red ornament, Linus and the others help to decorate the tree into something beautiful. It's curious how there can be so many takeaways from this short animated film. Primarily, the entire story is meant to emphasize the over-commercialization of Christmas. Lucy soliciting money for advice, Snoopy decorating his doghouse, and Charlie Brown's sister asking him to write a letter to Santa saying she would be willing to accept money as a present are all prime examples of this. 
Secondly, it showcases the fact that beauty can be found in anything, especially the things in life that can seem most small, lost, or uncertain. It's easy to fall prey to the commercialization of Christmas, but a Charlie Brown Christmas will always be there as a simple and beautiful reminder of the true meaning of Christmas. Number five, Home Alone. Home Alone is about an eight-year-old boy who finds himself in the most unusual of circumstances with the house to himself after his family accidentally forgot him on their trip overseas. Kevin, played by Macaulay Culkin, awakens to find that his parents, siblings, and cousins have left for Paris in a hurry and in the process unintentionally forgot him at home. Ironically, the night before, Kevin had wished for his family to disappear forever in a fight with his mother. Being the youngest and seemingly a thorn in everyone else's side, Kevin proceeds to do what any rational eight-year-old would do in this situation, eat ice cream, watch gangster movies, and much more. The charm and the innocence of the film really hits its stride in the second half of the movie when two would-be burglars, otherwise known as the Wet Bandits, attempt to invade the McAllister home with Kevin waiting inside. The slapstick style of humor lends itself nicely to the overall enjoyment of the film, and to this day this is undeniably the film that Macaulay Culkin is most well known for. While it may be Macaulay Culkin whose exasperated face appears as the cover of this movie, for me, it has always been the performances of the two burglars, Harry and Marv, played by Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern, that provide most of the laughs and are often the victims of the slapstick style of comedy. An additional subplot worth noting, as it is ultimately Kevin's salvation when things look most dire, is the scary old man on the block is simply misunderstood and comes to the rescue to save Kevin from the burglars, lending credence to the age-old saying that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. While the movie isn't meant to be particularly deep, the prevailing theme is to showcase the value of family, even when they may accidentally leave you on the other side of the world. Number four, Elf. Okay, I know some of you may have been expecting to see this higher and even at the number one spot, and for good reason too. Elf in many ways is a generational Christmas movie, one that for many millennials in particular is now considered to be the Christmas movie. Before we dive into Elf, I have a small confession to make. I actually used to dislike this movie. To be fair, I'm not so sure I ever disliked it as much as I felt like everyone hyped this movie up to be better than it was. However, I can honestly say having rewatched Elf dozens of times during adulthood, the Jon Favreau directed comedy now sits much more warmly and firmly higher in my Christmas movie rankings than I ever would have placed it in the years following its release. What else do you have to say about Elf other than Will Ferrell? You would be hard-pressed to find a character in comedy in the past two decades more uniquely associated with one character than Will Ferrell and Buddy the Elf. And that's certainly saying something considering how many humorous and iconic roles Will Ferrell has played. While it's one of my favorite Christmas movies, perhaps Elf's greatest flaw, if I had to nitpick, is that Will Ferrell is so good in this role, the plot sometimes feels secondary to the hilarity that ensues around Buddy the Elf. There are, of course, many plot lines, such as his relationship with his new little brother and his heartfelt and awkward romance with the department store girl Jovi. However, it is Buddy's relationship with his father, Walter, played by the late James Caan, that delivers the most heartwarming response. A gruff and grumpy man when we first meet him, the ridiculous Buddy slowly softens Walter's heart to the point where he makes the decision to sacrifice money from a publishing deal to prioritize his family. And it is Walter's belief, along with the faith of the other caroling members of the crowds, that ultimately allows Santa's sleigh to fly. Just remember, never dismiss people just because they're different, and joy and happiness are always contagious. If you don't think Elf belongs in the top 10 Christmas movies of all time, then I only have one thing to say to you. You sit on a throne of lies. Number 3. How the Grinch Stole Christmas I cannot recall a year in my entire life when I haven't watched this movie. Unlike some of the other films on this list with subpar sequels or adaptations, How the Grinch Stole Christmas is one of the very few Christmas movie franchises where there honestly isn't a bad adaptation. Well, almost no bad adaptations. The animated 2018 The Grinch, as well as Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas in 2000, are both really good movies. But for me, the original 1966 How the Grinch Stole Christmas is the best adaptation, though it may be by a slim margin over the live action version. The original 1966 version is certainly the closest to the Dr. Seuss source material. Ultimately though, you could easily substitute the 2000 live action version into this spot depending upon your taste and preference when it comes to Christmas movies. 
Are you one for adherence to the original intent with minimal straying from the original story, or do you prefer expansions of original stories that may take certain liberties, whether they be good or bad, to expand upon the characters? If you're in the first camp, you likely prefer the 1966 version, while if you're in the latter, there's a good chance the 2000 version is your favorite. The original is what I grew up on, and it remains my favorite, as I personally don't feel within the context of the original story that there is much of a need for the audience to feel bad for the Grinch in order to feel optimistic about his change of heart, no pun intended. Boris Karloff, who provides the memorable narration as well as the voice of the Grinch himself, is foundational to the character. What also cements this version as the best is the iconic rendition of You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch by Thurl Ravenscroft. After taking all the presents and decorations, the Grinch questions, how could this be that the Who's could be singing so joyously? Of course, the Grinch learns that Christmas isn't about gifts, flashing lights, Christmas trees, or really any one thing. Maybe Christmas doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. Number two, A Christmas Carol. When Charles Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol in 1843, I doubt he would have expected that there would someday be dozens and dozens of movie adaptations of his story. Perhaps that's because movies hadn't been invented yet, but you get the point. While there may be numerous Christmas Carol adaptations, perhaps too many, the 1951 version, originally released as Scrooge in the United Kingdom, starring Alistair Sim as the grouchy Ebenezer Scrooge, holds an edge above the others. If you watch various renditions of this classic, you will likely find Sim's representation of Scrooge to be miles above the rest, particularly in his portrayal of Scrooge's redemption in the last act. If you're not accustomed to black and white movies, that may be a difficult hurdle to clear, but in many ways the neutral tones actually do a lot to enhance the gothic period piece. The film is nearing its 75th anniversary, and while you would expect the special effects to be glaring for such a long amount of time elapsed since its release, you find yourself thinking, wow, that's surprising they had the capability to do that in the 1950s. While its effects are obviously nowhere near those of today's standards, they also haven't aged nearly as poorly as those in some of the other movies on this list. As Scrooge comes face to face with the ghost of his former partner Jacob Marley and the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future, his demeanor and view of Christmas become altered drastically. More than anything, A Christmas Carol is a redemptive arc. We are greeted by a greedy, selfish, and downright rude man who undergoes a life-altering transformation. These encounters with the various spirits represent the transformative road that Scrooge must travel. Where there was once greed, there is now generosity. Where there was once misery, there is now joy. Where there was once hate, there is now love. The movie is loaded with everything you would expect from A Christmas Carol. And if you don't like it, Humbert! Before we get to the number one Christmas movie, here are a few honorable mentions that didn't quite make the list. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite Christmas movie is that was left out of the rankings. Number one, It's a Wonderful Life. I can recall the first time I watched It's a Wonderful Life. It was actually when I was in high school that I stumbled upon it while flipping through television channels. All I can remember from that watch through was how frequently commercials were inserted, turning what should have been a two hour movie into three and a half hours. However, I also recall not once leaving my seat during the showing and being thoroughly captivated by a seemingly outdated production. What may seem outdated on the surface proves to be a timeless film one that I now take great pleasure in watching every year. Ironically, It's a Wonderful Life tanked at the box office when it was initially released in 1946. In fact, it would be nearly a quarter century before the movie would become a reoccurring staple on TV during the holiday season. In many ways, It's a Wonderful Life is not so different from A Christmas Carol. While the disposition of Ebenezer Scrooge is vastly different from that of George Bailey in this film, both characters are forced to reevaluate their lives by imagining a world without their presence. Ultimately, this is what makes both A Christmas Carol and It's a Wonderful Life the masterpieces that they are. The movie delivers a heartwarming message about the importance of family and community, but doesn't go about it in a cheesy way that would otherwise taint the significance of the film's conclusion. There is no ending to this movie without first experiencing the dark state of George's character and the realness that his despair provides to the plot. 
It is what makes the hills that much more rewarding to have experienced the deepest valleys of George's anguish. It goes to show that sometimes it's easy to look past what's right in front of you. If you continue to always look elsewhere for happiness or focus on the things you don't have, then you will never actually achieve the happiness that you are in search of. Check out the videos on screen. Thanks for watching this video. Remember to subscribe and hit that bell to know when the next Today's Rankings video goes live. Leave it a like and comment down below. What do you want to see ranked next? This has been Ben for Today's Rankings. Have a great day.